I will praise you, Lord, among the nations, and I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. And so we open our heart to the great gift of God's love and mercy in this Easter season, rejoicing that he is risen and our sins are forgiven. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. And you came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith you possess an unending love. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filed with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent them to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as what to do and what this outcome would be. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in the, in the prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my, my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. 
Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading today is from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world and people prepared darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come towards the light, so that their works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we listen to these words from Jesus and we always catch that 316 as I said earlier on baseball and football games, the placard goes up, because that's the first verse of today's gospel. But these words, Jesus was speaking at night. You see, he had a visitor. His name was Nicodemus. He was someone of the ruling class. He heard about the miracles that Jesus was performing at the beginning of Jesus's ministry. The first miracle was the wedding feast of Cana, turning water into wine. And then there were other comments about Jesus doing miracles and proclaiming the good news. So early in Jesus's ministry does Nicodemus come, but he can't make up his mind. But he's curious. And the words we hear today are all this private conversation one-on-one with Jesus and Nicodemus. You see, yesterday, when you were listening to the readings, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? He told him that he had to be born again. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, it was my, usually my Baptist friends and their adults who would ask the question, Doug, are you born again? Usually followed by right away, if you die tonight, do you believe that you're saved? Now, growing up, all I remember is being told that Jesus was going to be the person that got to judge my life at the end of the world. And so I would always fumble when someone said to me, have you been born again? Are you saved? For me to say I was saved, I thought was like saying Jesus isn't going to judge my life. He has no say in it. Nicodemus was also confused. I can't get back in my mother's womb and be born again. And so Jesus today tells him, that God loves the world and Jesus has come into the world. He asks them to think about light and darkness. The easiest thing is what do we do? We do things every day. 
was Ignatius of Loyola who, thinking about this idea of being in the light and darkness, said, you know, the easiest way to test the spirit is to imagine very simply, if I was doing this activity by myself and no one knew I was going to do it, and then I had the whole world know what I did on Facebook, would I be embarrassed or okay with it? And when I say embarrassed, not embarrassed from the standpoint of, wow, I flush because I feel unhumble to have people see what I'm doing, but embarrassed from shame. Ignatius said, you know something is in the darkness and not of the spirit if you don't want anyone to know about it. Nicodemus came at night. He didn't want anyone to know that he was visiting Jesus. He listened to Jesus's ministry a long time, but eventually he would make his choice. He would go and help prepare Jesus's body. And at trial, before the trial, it was Nicodemus who said Jesus should have a chance to talk about who he is and what he did. And so, the good deeds that you do, let them give glory to God, your Father. Be like Peter today, who stood up and said, I have something to say. I want to tell you about God's love and goodness. I never thought about the fact that when that person in the baseball stadium or football stadium held up that banner that said 316, that all that person was doing was really trying to be an evangelist, to lovingly ask us to think about our Lord and Savior. They brought it out in the light. This day, this week, how will you let your light shine? Let God's glory shine through you. And so we ask God to hear our prayers today. We pray for all of the opportunities that God gives us to share our faith and life in Jesus, that we might be able to lovingly bring others to know God's good news. We pray to the Lord. We remember those who live in fear, whatever that fear is, financial, spiritual, emotional, physical. We pray especially for those who are worried about loved ones right now who are sick, who struggle, not knowing what will be available to them for their families, that they may receive the light of God's love and care. We pray to the Lord. Let us also remember today a special request for Jose and Yolanda Carlos on their 58th wedding anniversary. And for all who celebrate the gift of marriage, that their love, as St. Paul said, may reflect the love of Christ for his bride, the church. We pray to the Lord. And for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Tom Hamill on the anniversary of his birthday, we pray to the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers and our needs to you. And we pray that you may always allow us to be in the light of Christ and to reflect his light and love for the salvation of the world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have the spread to offer, which earth has given in human hands have made, will become for us the bed of life.
for the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself and shares in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine with human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Now pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entering willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so, at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we always be free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of our Lord be with you. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth to reflect the light and love of our risen Lord.